I started the season with a huge chip on my shoulder and really doubting myself. And I think that that came through, you know, I felt like I had something to prove. And I was constantly comparing myself to other players. I looked left and right to me and I said, where do I belong on this season 40 of all winners? You know, look at these legends. And I was comparing myself to people on my season and I was comparing myself to other, you know, notorious survivors and that self-doubt really got the best of me. But what I realized watching the season back and you know playing the full 39 days of season 40 is that they might be great players, but Michelle Fitzgerald is a great player too, and it may not look the same. Every person who won previously has played different styles of game. And I came to appreciate that on season 40. I do feel like season 40 gave me some type of closure that I needed really desperately. And so I'm really, really proud of myself and I'm proud of my game. Um, and I don't feel like I have anything to prove anymore. Well, it is no surprise that I was left out of a ton of votes in Survivor Winners at War, but I think the key to my success and my survival, despite being left out, was that I was able to remain super optimistic and not really get too paranoid and frustrated despite being left out of the vote. So obviously you get back from camp after a crazy betrayal and it's really hard not to flip out and say, what the heck did you do that for you bunch of idiots? But realistically, that's not really great for the game. And I always knew that. I always knew it is a game at the end of the day and what might have, the people who may have betrayed me today might need to betray somebody else tomorrow. And so by alienating them, you're closing off an avenue that eventually, you know, could be, could benefit. And I knew that if nobody else was gonna protect me, I'd find a way to get scrappy and protect myself. And that's exactly what I did. Oh, the Wendell situation was so awkward. And I'm sure everybody was cringing on their couches. I was cringing from my couch. Super, super duper, incredibly uncomfortable for everyone. Um, so I apologize, I apologize to Wendell for all the things that I said. I do mean that. Unfortunately, our situation happened to happen on national television while being stranded on an island so for $2 million. So obviously all the feelings were a bit amplified. So I have to apologize. He's a wonderful person, guys. I swear he really is. And um, we are just friends now. Good friends, just friends. Love you, Wendell. I think my best move of the season was probably the Ethan vote. Uh, it was really sad to see Ethan go, but ultimately Jeremy and I were working with Parvati and uh, Boston Rob. Unfortunately, we didn't have as close ties with Ethan, so we knew that one of the old schoolers were gonna be targeted. We also knew that we wanted to keep around the people who we felt we could move forward with during a swap. We had the sense that a swap was coming up, so we really wanted to keep those options open. Uh, so it seemed that Ethan was kind of the best decision for us. We also knew that Adam had kind of been scurrying off and letting our plan, uh, leaking our plan to Boston Rob. So we wanted to make sure that he would also be penalized. And we also knew that he would probably go back and try to switch the vote back onto Pav, Parv or Boston Rob. So we left him out of the vote and the four of us all voted Ethan out. And it was very sad because we love Ethan, but it was a great move strategically because Ethan could 10 out of 10 win this game of Survivor. Trust was in pretty short supply for me on Winners at War. I had some really great alliances that betrayed me, Jeremy, Nick. I also had some really great alliance members who I had to betray, Wendell, Parv, you all. So it was, it was a hard game. I think in the sense that we were all out there to win $2 million and um, we had to do some things to other people and other people had to do some things to us that maybe, you know, were a little bit frustrating to watch. But ultimately I, I did trust and I do love all of them and um, I would go back and play again with them any day. Every single person on season 40 was a threat. Let me tell you, whether you're a lion or a hyena, they both bite. And uh, I was scared of every single person out there, to be honest. I mean, seeing these people in real life, like 
real time, watching the, how they finesse the game, it was incredible. At the end of the day, I was most intimidated by Tony. I thought he was playing the best game. Um, and I was scared crapless that I would have to sit next to him at the finals and guess what? That's exactly what happened. I think my key to making top three in this season was relationship building, um, keeping my options open, being optimistic, and also just getting scrappy as all hell in the end. Because sometimes you just have to get really, really scrappy and protect yourself when nobody else has your back. And I definitely did that. <laughs>